Hello everyone. Uh, up to now, uh, we have discussed several uh, things about the relational model, various aspects of that and uh, the languages associated with that. So that each relational schema consists of number of attributes and the relational database schema consists of number of relational schemas. Okay. So that uh, so far we have assumed that the attributes group from uh, group to form a relational schema by using the common sense of the database design or mapping a database schema from a conceptual data model that we have created that is ER1 EER diagrams. Okay. So the these uh, models. Uh, helped us to identify uh, entity types and relationship types and their respective attributes okay. and it uh, it tends to lead uh, to a, a natural grouping of attributes into relations and uh, uh, we map them according to the mapping guidelines that we have discussed uh, in a uh, uh, in the previous lectures okay but however we have uh, we still uh, need to discuss uh, some formal ways of analyzing uh, why one grouping of attributes into relational schema may be better than the other uh, sort of a grouping of attributes and also, uh, uh, we need to uh, measure the quality of the design, the goodness, okay? the goodness of the uh, uh, design. We have to measure that. Okay? Uh, so that uh, in this chapter, we are trying to uh, uh, discuss that sort of a uh, that uh, sort of qualities how we are going to measure how we are going to uh, uh, how we are going to prove that uh, this is a, uh, a one good design uh, that uh, we have created so first we will go through the outline of this uh, lecture uh, we are going to discuss about informal uh, design guidelines for relational databases Functional dependencies, normal forms uh, based on primer keys, general normal form definitions, and the DCNF or the boys got normal form. Now we'll first go through the informal design guideline. There we are going to uh, discuss semantics of the relational uh, relation attributes and the redundant information in tuples and update anomalies, null values in tuples and uh, spur uh, spurious tuples. This is uh, uh, the uh, example that we have been discussing throughout the lectures, the company database diagram, and uh, this is the relational uh, 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 mapping. A database schema of the uh, company database and uh, in the second image what you can see is a simplified simplified version of that uh, schema whenever we group attributes of, uh, to form a relational schema we assume the attributes uh, belong to one relation to have certain real world meaning and a proper uh, interpretation associated with them. So the uh, semantics of a relation refers to its uh, meaning uh, resulting from the interpretation of attributes, values in the tuple. Okay, so whenever you see that uh, this, the word semantic, it, give, uh, it uh, talks about the meaning or the uh, logic of the uh, sentence that you uh, that you're talking about so when we come to the first guideline it says the uh, design uh, when we design a relation schema so that it 
is easy to explain its meaning. Okay, uh, so where we are not going to combine attributes from multiple entity types and the relation types into a singular relation. Okay, intuitively, if uh, a relation schema corresponds to one entity type uh, or a one relation type it is straightforward that it's going to explain its meaning okay. that is only if uh, the relational schema uh, corresponds to a one entity type or one uh, relation type in other cases what happens is when we mix up the attributes of the relationship types and the entity types it's hard to explain its meaning or the semantics and um, uh, ambiguity uh, will result uh, that the uh, relation cannot be explained easily. Okay. So that uh, so this guideline assures that uh, all the uh, 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 in each tuple. In a relation, it will, uh, it will uh, represent either an entity or a relationship type. Okay. And uh, these uh, attributes from uh, uh, different uh, entity types and the relationship types, we are not going to mix them together. And we will be using foreign keys to refer other entities. And the uh, uh, entity and relationship attributes will be kept apart as much as possible in order to explain them uh, clearly. If we go through this, uh, the first uh, figure, uh, these uh, also have uh, clear semantic if you uh, go through this. And uh, uh, the tuple uh, in uh, employee department, okay, a relation schema uh, will have uh, will represent a single employee, but includes along with the department number and uh, and additional informations, okay, like department name, manager, etc. But uh, uh, for uh, for the employee re uh, project relation as well, uh, it gives you the uh, uh, that uh, the tuples related to the employee to the project, okay, and also includes the uh, employee name, the project name, okay, and the project location. There's nothing wrong with the uh, with the logic of these two relations, but still they violate the guideline one by mixing the attributes from distinct uh, real world entities. The employee department mixes the attributes from the employees and the department, and the employee project uh, mixes the attributes from the employees and the uh, project and also from the works on relation okay. and uh, this is against the guideline one okay so that uh, there's a problem with the quality of the uh, two relations okay these two uh, these two uh, uh, these two can be used as weaves when we retrieve data but when uh, if we are using these two as uh, base relations okay, several problems can arise okay. the goal of uh, uh, doing a way of doing a uh, good schema design is to minimize the storage space used to uh, used by the base relations 
and grouping the attributes into relational schemas has a significant effect on the uh, storage space. Okay. Uh, for an example, in the uh, the the first uh, relation that we have uh, talked about, the combination of department and employee, okay, uh, will give you the employee details, but in front of each and each and every employee, it will give you the department number, department name, and the manager says it. And uh, also that will happen to the uh, employee project relation that we have talked about. Okay. So um, uh, whenever that happens, uh, uh, the storing of information redundantly, it's a waste of storage. Okay. And it causes the problems with uh, update anom anomalies, such as insert anomalies, deletion anomalies and modification anomalies. So we can take uh, several examples of update anomalies, insert anomalies, delete anomalies, and the modification anomalies. In this, um, if we take this uh, two relations, if we talk about insertion anomalies, uh, we can uh, differentiate it uh, into two types. If we illustrate it with the employee department relation. Uh, in order to insert a new employee double into employee department, we must uh, either uh, uh, enter all the attributes values uh, of for the department that employee works for, or we can insert null. Okay, for an example, to insert a new tuple for employee, right? Uh, in the uh, Employee we works uh, who works for the department number five. What we have to do is we must enter all the attributes values for the department number five correctly. Okay. Um, so, uh, so there's a problem with the consistency. Okay. In certain tuples, uh, yeah, yeah, where uh, for all the tuples that uh, who for the employees who works in the department number five. Okay, we have to worry about the consistency of the other data when we enter uh, yeah, when we enter them each and every time. Okay. But uh, in uh, in the case that we have uh, two different relations of uh, for employee and the department, <coughs> okay, uh, we don't have to worry about the consistency problem because. Uh, we just have to enter the number five uh, in the employee table, uh, and uh, the department in the department relation we will separately uh, maintain the details of the uh, department number five in a single tuple. Okay, so we don't have to worry about the consistency there. So uh, in this case, if we haven't done the grouping correctly. Uh, it will suffer this insertion anomaly type. Okay. And also it is uh, dif uh, difficult to insert new department okay, that has no employees yet. Okay. Let's say that uh, uh, there's a department newly, uh, newly uh, established, but uh, still it doesn't have any employee. Okay. So that uh, we can't do that because uh, SSM is the uh, primary key. So if we keep it as null, then it's going to violate the entity integrity of the employee department table. Okay. Moreover, the first employee assigned is uh, assigned to the department. We do, do not need this tuple with null values anymore. So that uh, this problem does not occur if we have the design uh, and in separately uh, department and the employee. Okay. We can add any number of department into the department table okay. uh, so that the problem will be solved if we have done the grouping of attributes correctly.
and uh, if we consider, and if we talk about the deletion anomaly, the problem of the deletion anomaly is related to the second insertion anomaly situation that we have discussed. That is, uh, uh, if we delete an employee that happens to be the last employee working for a certain department, okay, that uh, make that will cause uh, that uh, that will cause the department uh, is lost uh, inadvertently uh, from the database. Okay, so that uh, uh, and also the modification anomalies. If uh, and let's say that we have changed the name of the department number five. Okay, so that if we have. Uh, a relay base relation like employee department what we have to do is we have to change um, uh, the name of the department for all the employees who works for the department number five okay. so that is an uh, extra effort that we have to uh, put on that uh, on the modification okay. so those are the modification anomalies deletion anomalies and the insert anomalies that might you might get Okay, and uh, also that you can see that uh, having this sort of uh, uh, will be um, uh, will cause uh, for the redundancy of data which is a waste of storage now uh, the guideline two uh, to to the uh, to redundant information and tuple tuples and update anomalies is also a sort of a uh, uh, restatement of the uh, first guideline. Okay, uh, we have to design the uh, design the uh, base relation schema so that the no insertion anomalies, deletion or modification anomalies are present in the relation. So if you have detected any, you have to uh, uh, note them clearly and make sure that the programs that uh, update the database will operate correctly okay the guideline 3 uh, talks about the null values null values in tuples the relation should not uh, uh, all the relations should be designed uh, in a way that the tuples will have a very few number of null values as per as much as possible so that uh, and also it is advised if uh, it is better to uh, place whatever the uh, null values uh, in a separate relation with the primary key in some schema designs we may uh, we may tend to group many attributes together into a fat relation we call that a fat relation because we we have a lot of attributes but uh, many of the attributes do not apply for all the tuples. Okay, so we what we have hap what happens is we ended up with a uh, 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 many num a number of null values for e uh, for those tuples under those attributes, which are not applicable for them. Okay, so that it's a clearly a waste of storage, and uh, may also lead to problem with understanding the meaning. What is the uh, what is the meaning of the attributes if we take them separately? So that uh, 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 there are certain cases that we are going that uh, we are, we are going to have uh, null values. Well, uh, some of the attributes does not apply to the tuples for all the tuples. Okay, for an uh, uh, example, if we take a university. We may have resident students and the international students. Okay? If we uh, consider them uh, together in a in a in a single relation, okay? uh, and if we have a status, uh, if we have an attribute called visa status, okay? that might not that is not applicable for the native students. Okay, for them so the for the native students, that visa status will be null. Okay, but uh, uh, for the inter for the international students only it can be applicable so it is bit, uh, it is advised we have uh, to have two relations for two types of uh, students so that uh, this would 
uh, create less number of null values okay and there are certain attributes values for these tuples are unknown uh, uh, for an example date of birth of uh, uh, of the employee may not uh, unknown okay and uh, also there are certain cases the value is uh, known but absent but uh, that is, uh, it has been recorded, it has not been recorded yet. Okay. For an example, the phone number, uh, home phone number of the employee may exist but not available and recorded yet. So that also can create null values uh, in the relation. Um, the guideline for is about uh, spurious tuples, that is, uh, fake or the uh, uh, erroneous uh, uh, results of the tuples. Uh, when we do a grouping of attributes in, a, in an incorrect way or uh, in a bad design, what happens is when we do when you when we do the join operation, uh, this uh, erroneous. Uh, uh, Erroneous uh, results uh, for certain join operations can occur. Okay. And uh, uh, this guideline four states about that uh, 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 that's a uh, spurious uh, tuples that can occur. So that is an, uh, in an, uh, when we design a relational schema so that they can be joined with each. Um, with uh, they should be able to join with equality condition on attributes uh, that are appropriately related uh, for primary case and the foreign case uh, pair with the uh, uh, in a way that guarantee with no spurious tuples can are generated okay so the uh, what we have to do is we have to avoid relations that contains matching attributes uh, that are not uh, that are not combination combinations because uh, joining on such attributes uh, may produce uh, spurious tuples so that uh, uh, the informal guidelines obviously needs to be stated uh, in a uh, uh, in uh, it will be stated more formally if you read through the uh, chapter level Okay, so you can uh, get more details about it uh, the, as a summary what you have to do is when we do the, when we do the design of the relational uh, schema um, it has to be in a way that we it allows uh, for the natural joins uh, in a uh, in a uh, which will satisfy the law uh, lossless property as well so in a summary that we have uh, discussed in this section what uh, uh, anomalies that can uh, cause uh, redundant work uh, to be done during the insertion and uh, insertion uh, uh, into the uh, uh, into the table into the relations and modifications of the relation and may cause accidentally loss of information and uh, uh, during the deletion of relation uh, so that uh, it has to be uh, uh, it, we have to overcome that uh, use, uh, by grouping the attributes into correct entity types and the relationship type and uh, this uh, the waste of storage space due to nulls and, uh, and the uh, difficulty of performing uh, selection, aggregations, and the operations join uh, and the join operations due to the null values. And also this, uh, uh, um, and also we have detected if we haven't done a good, uh, we haven't designed a good relation. What happens is a generation of uh, invalid uh, spurious data during join operations so that has to be avoided uh, so that uh, we're going to uh, 
specify the uh, specify our uh, schema in a way that uh, uh, according to the informal guideline so that we can avoid much of these uh, uh, much of uh, these uh, uh, anomalies So now we have to move on to the functional dependencies. Uh, in under this one, under this section, we are going to discuss about the functional dependencies, inference rules for functional dependencies, equivalent sets of FDs, and the minimal sets of uh, functional dependencies. We have discussed uh, some informal measures of database design. Now we are going to introduce some formal tools uh, for for the analysis of the uh, relational schema, which will uh, allow you to detect and uh, detect and describe some of the uh, problems that we have uh, discussed earlier uh, in the sec uh, in the in the previous section precisely. Okay, so the. Uh, uh, the single most important concept of relational schema and design theory is that the functional dependency. Okay. So the, uh, in this section, we are going to discuss about those functional dependencies. And uh, these functional dependencies, we uh, are used to uh, specify, the measure, me, me, uh, specify the measurements of the goodness of a relational design. Okay. And uh, here we use keys uh, to define normal forms for the relations. Okay. And the constraints uh, that are derived from the meaning uh, and the uh, interrelationships of the data attributes. So a set of attributes x functionally determines a set of attributes y if the values of x determines a unique value for y. Okay. So that is a basic idea for the uh, function, uh, idea of the uh, functional dependencies. If we go through the definition of functional dependencies, let's say uh, uh, the functional dependencies um, uh, when we take this functional dependency is a constraint between two sets of attributes uh, two sets of attributes from the database okay. uh, suppose that uh, our relational database schema has n attributes okay. uh, so it is up uh, a1 up to a n okay and let's think that the whole database uh, as being described by a single universal relation schema okay so that r that's relation schema r is contains attributes a1 up to a n okay we just uh, we do not imply that we we are actually going to uh, store the database in in a single uh, single table or the sing in a single relation for in order to develop the uh, formal theory of uh, data dependency we just uh, 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 take it as a thing uh, the whole database consists of a single relation uh, with all the attributes okay. so that uh, uh, in the functional dependency definition okay we denote x determines y okay, uh, between two sets of attributes x and y okay. so uh, that x and y are subsets of r okay specifies a constraint on possible tuples that can form the relation uh, state r of r okay the constraint is for any tuple okay for any two tuple t1 and t2 in r Okay, in uh, simple R means the uh, simple uh, uh, simple R will be the uh, state of the relation. Okay, state means the 
if we take a screenshot uh, with the x the state of the relation uh, is uh, r and the constraint is that uh, any two tuples any two tuples uh, t1 and t2 in uh, in the state r uh, they should have uh, t1 of x okay, should be equal to the t2 of x okay then uh, they must have t1 of y is also should be a equal to the t2 of y why because uh, for the same value of x the y value should be same because if uh, it determines uh, if x determines y if the value is x always the value of y should be same okay so for any tuples where the t uh, uh, any two tuples where t 1x equals to the t2x t1y should be equal to the t1y okay so that is the uh, definition formal definition of the functional dependency um, uh, so we can uh, discuss about discuss uh, uh, some examples so that you can understand the concept uh, clearly the sh uh, so if you take the social security number of the uh, of an employee okay it will al always determine the employee name uh, in the employee table okay and the project number will determine the project name and the location and also the employee uh, ssn and the project number okay will determine the uh, hours per week that employee has worked on the on a certain project okay yeah whenever, whenever wherever if uh, whenever you take uh, an ssn okay uh, according to the ssn the employee number will be unique according to the project number the project name and the project location will be same uh, and also the if you take ssn and the project number together and the num number of hours uh, per week will be same okay uh, a functional dependency is a property of the relational schema r not a particular uh, legal relational uh, relation state of our uh, state so therefore these functional dependencies cannot be inferred automatically from a given relation extension but uh, they must be defined explicitly by, by someone who knows the semantics of the attributes of R. Okay. And uh, if you take it as an uh, example, uh, we'll go later when we are with the inference rules. So in the example that we are going to discuss, we can uh, say that uh, uh, we'll first consider the uh, relation state uh, of uh, teach with the possible functional dependencies uh, such as uh, a text uh, determine the course and uh, however we can also say teacher determine course. Uh, although we can see that at the uh, at our first glance, uh, we can think that text determine course, but we cannot confirm it unless we know uh, that it is true for all possible legal states of teach. Right? So as we have a part of the uh, part of an extension here or a, a state we can't say we can't conclude that uh, surely that text determine uh, text determines the course okay do you get that so we can't uh, conclude that but uh, if there's any counter uh, argument uh, that proves uh, 
uh, a single uh, 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 counter example that we can prove that uh, um, and there's uh, the uh, uh, which disapproves the functional dependencies if you take an example here uh, Smith uh, the teacher Smith okay uh, uh, teaches both data structures and data management so that disapproves that teacher determines a course okay so we can clearly state that okay uh, teachers are the course is not functionally dependent on the teacher okay teachers are not going to determine the uh, course okay so that uh, we can prove that but not vice versa unless we know all the uh, all the legal uh, states of the uh, uh, teach okay, we can't uh, 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 we can clearly mention that now uh, that uh, a certain attribute depends on the other okay so that uh, as a summary we can uh, uh, we can summarize it uh, in a given populated uh, relation we cannot determine which functional dependencies hold or which function which do not unless we know the meaning of the relationship uh, among the attributes okay so we should know the semantics okay that's why we say that uh, uh, we cannot uh, um, uh, it's a property of the relational schema not a particular legal relation that's why we say so okay so that uh, we can't infer it uh, automatically from the given extension but uh, someone who know the semantics of the uh, attribute so the uh, actual logical relationship of the attributes in uh, in R can determine uh, what are the functional dependencies are okay so all we can say is that a certain functional dependency may exit exist uh, if it holds the particular extension okay so we cannot guarantee its existence until we understand the uh, semantics okay uh, for a given set of uh, functional dependencies if we can uh, infer some additional uh, functional dependencies that holds when uh, whenever the functional dependencies of in f holds right? so that uh, the first uh, uh, we can uh, uh, talk about is armstrong inference rules the first inference rule is the reflexive re uh, in uh, inference rule that is uh, if y is a subset of x okay if y is a subset of x then uh, x will determine y okay so for an example if uh, x uh, has the attributes uh, a b c d up a b c d and e okay and y is a uh, subset of x means uh, uh, y will have a b c okay so in that case x will determine y so the the second rule in second inference rule is the augmentation rule okay in the augmentation rule it is also called as the uh, as a uh, partial dependency okay in augmentation if x determines y okay then uh, x is z determines y is z for any z so uh, it says uh, for an example if we say uh, for a relation we if we have uh, uh, a b c d as attributes okay and if a determines b right then a c will determine b c okay so that is the augmentation rule and uh, there's another rule that is transitive dependency 
circuit in the transitive determines uh, de uh, a transitive rule transitive rule uh, uh, in that uh, if x determines y and y determines z okay we can also say x determines z okay if x determines y and y and y determines z then in uh, according to the transitive dependency we can say uh, x determines z okay so that uh, that is the uh, a transitive dependency those are the three uh, inference rules uh, uh, under armstrong inference rule okay uh, it is uh, we say that it is a sound and complete set of inference rules uh, but this inference rule can hold only uh, if the given set of uh, functional dependencies uh, f falls in the relation okay. so that uh, some additional rules can also be uh, 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 deduced from this uh, uh, from this and uh, those will be the composition union and the uh, uh, pseudo transitive transitive depend uh, inference rule okay in the union uh, inference rule what we say is if x determines y and x determines is it we can say x determines together y and is it okay, so that is uh, union inference rule and for the uh, decomposition rule we say uh, that uh, is also known as the project rule uh, it is the reverse of the union okay so that it says uh, if x determines y uh, and z okay then x determines y and x determines z separately okay so that is the reverse of the uh, decomposition which is project rule okay and in the pseudo transitivity uh, or the pseudo transitive rule it says if x determines y and y is it determines w then x is it uh, together determines w okay uh, so uh, these are the last three inference rule as uh, will the uh, any other inference rule can be deduced uh, from the uh, uh we have uh, we have deduced using this r1 r2 and r3 so all together we have six inference rule uh, for this uh, functional dependencies then we need to know what is a closure of a set of uh, set of f of functional dependencies yeah, is and uh, this closure of uh, functional dependencies uh, means the complete set of all possible attributes that can be functionally derived from a given functional dependency using the inference rules. Uh, as we have learned uh, the Armstrong rules, the first three inference rules. Okay, using the first three inference rule, we are going to derive a uh, uh, derive possible attributes uh, according to the functional dependencies okay so we denote it as uh, using uh, 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 using the symbol uh, 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 superscript uh, plus mark okay so that is how we are going to denote the uh, closure of a given functional dependency uh, set of functional dependency f so that uh, we also say that uh, yeah, this can be calculated repeatedly by applying uh, inference rules uh, and the first three inference rules that we have learned as armstrong rules okay. and uh, if we take two sets of uh, functional dependencies we say they are equivalent okay uh, if and only if if they uh, have the following properties and the first property is they should be the the um, every functional dependency in f 
should be able to infer from G and also it should be the vice versa. The, all the uh, functional dependencies in G should be inferred, uh, should be able to be inferred from F. Okay, so that we can say that the F and G are equivalent if the closure of uh, functional depend uh, uh, the set of uh, functional dependency F is equal to the closure of functional dependency set set of functional dependency G. Okay. <coughs> So F covers G if every functional dependency in G can be inferred from F. Okay, so the uh, so that we can consider F and G are equivalent if F covers G and G covers F. Okay, so we the definition we say covers covers mean if uh, F and G F covers G mean every functional dependency in G can be inferred from F. G covers F means every functional dependency in G, F can be inferred from G, okay, and uh, so uh, uh, there's an algorithm for checking the equivalence of the set of functional dependencies as well, okay, so the minimal sets of functional dependencies are also something that we have to uh, um, think, uh, we have to learn. In here, a set of functional dependencies is uh, minimal if uh, it satisfies the following properties. So, it should satisfy the, uh, these uh, properties in order to consider that set of, uh, set of functional dependencies as the minimal. That is what it says. Uh, as a definition, we say a set of functional dependencies F is minimum if F has few uh, as uh, the functional the set of functional dependencies F has a few uh, functional dependencies as any equivalent set of uh, functional dependencies. So uh, we take it as uh, we normally consider that as a dip, uh, um, as a uh, definition and. Um, it also says that uh, when we take a set of functional dependencies F in order to consider it as a minimal, the closure of F, okay, if we uh, if we say that uh, minimal uh, uh, minimal cover G, uh, a set of functional dependencies F, if the um, we consider that minimal set G. Uh, is uh, uh, is equal to the closure of F. Okay, the closure of G should be equal to the closure of F, and the uh, also in uh, as a property, it should have in the right hand side of all the functional dependencies, it should be, uh, it should have uh, single attributes. Okay, if we modify the the minimal set G by deleting a functional dependencies, okay. Or by deleting attributes from the functional dependencies, the closures will change. Okay, means that is the minimal cover. Okay? That is the minimal cover for the set of functional dependencies. F. So we can consider that G as the minimal cover for the uh, functional dependency set of functional dependencies F. Intuitively, this uh, every functional dependency in G uh, or the minimal cover and uh, is uh, needed. Okay, every functional dependency in G is needed and uh, as small as possible. Okay, in order to get the same closure as F. Okay, so that. Uh, that is the minimal cover uh, of uh, a functional depend uh, of functional dependencies. You can uh, there are several uh, there are uh, algorithms in order to uh, get a minimal cover for a set of functional dependencies F. If we want to define a minimal cover for that for a set of uh, functional dependencies, we, there there are certain algorithms, so we can follow them in order to get the minimal set. One of them is uh, uh, the canonical algorithm that uh, that is one that you can uh, follow 
in order to uh, get the minimal set you can read uh, you can learn more uh, about them uh, by reading through chapter 11 uh, i advise you to uh, just uh, read through the chapter 11 and you can learn more things about this uh, normalization and uh, further uh, normalization topics and uh, this uh, uh, these algorithms so now we have to talk about the now we uh, now we uh, now we know what is functional dependencies and uh, some informal guidelines uh, in designing the database uh, in um, the relational model now we have to talk about this uh, this normal forms based on the primary keys okay so there are uh, three main normalization forms that we are going to talk talk about here uh, uh, so before that we are going to talk about the normalization of relations okay, what is that and the practical use of normal forms and the definition of keys and the attributes uh, participating in uh, keys okay and the uh, first normal form second normal form and the third normal form are the three normal forms that we are going to talk about here and those are those uh, three attributes they are based on the uh, primary keys of a relation okay so uh, let's continue into the uh, into details and now uh, this uh, process of uh, normalization is uh, first proposed by uh, Kant in 1972. This takes a relation a schema through a series of uh, tests in order to specify or certify that a certain relation satisfies a, a, a normal form. So there are specific normal, uh, there are certain normal forms defined, okay? and we take that uh, relation uh, schema through a set of tests so that we can uh, confirm that uh, uh, that uh, the relation is accord uh, is uh, specified according to that normal form if it satisfies the uh, test. The process uh, which uh, proceed uh, in top-down fashion by evaluating each relation against the criteria for normal forms and uh, decomposing the relations as necessary then uh, this uh, in uh, initially this uh, court has proposed uh, three no normal forms first second and third normal form and uh, later, a, a strong version of uh, uh, third normal form was proposed uh, by a cod. Again, that that was later. So that uh, after that, uh, there are uh, uh, fourth normal form and the fifth normal form uh, was proposed. But in this case, uh, as a uh, introduction, uh, we discuss up to. Um, boys code normal form or bcnf from first normal form first normal form second normal form third and bcnf those are the things that we are going to discuss uh, in this lecture okay. and this uh, normalization data can be considered as a uh, process of analyzing the given relation schema uh, based on the functional dependencies and the primary keys so that it will achieve a desirable properties of a uh, of uh, 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 minimizing redundancy, minimizing insertion, deletion, update, and uh, anomalies, right? And uh, it is called the filtering. We call that the filtering or a purification uh, process uh, to make the design have sensitively uh, success uh, successfully uh, 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 achieved a certain. Uh, normal form or uh, it has uh, uh, it adheres to the uh, uh, state of a certain normal form so uh, that is what we are going to do uh, in this normalization process 
so we have to go through some uh, definitions uh, before that we will talk about the practical use of this normal forms mostly uh, in uh, practical uh, design projects in commercial and government uh, environment acquires existing uh, design databases from the previous designs uh, from design in legacy model or the uh, from existing files there's certainly interest in assuring that the uh, the existing uh, designs are in good quality and sustainable over a long period of time okay so uh, each of these uh, uh, these existing uh, uh, so that uh, in order to uh, assure that okay existing designs will be evaluated by applying the tests for normal forms okay so that they can ensure that uh, uh, the uh, that the existing databases are meeting with the states uh, defined by these normal forms so that they can be accepted or they are in uh, high quality they can define that they are uh, they are high quality designs Although we have there, there are normal forms defined as fourth and fifth normal forms, in practical use, uh, uh, particularly we look for a third normal form, BCNF, or up, at most up to four NF. Okay. And uh, another point that the designers come up with is that the uh, having a higher normal form is sometimes is not. Uh, practical uh, in performance base okay so they sometimes are giving uh, having uh, a 2 nf is also enough in order to uh, have a good performing database okay and uh, uh, and we also come up with the uh, term denormalization which is the reverse process of normalization where it joins higher Higher normal, normal, higher normal uh, form relations, and the result will be a lower normal form relation. That is the practical uh, use of normal forms, and uh, we have to go through some definitions of uh, keys and attributes participating in the keys. So the first definition that we are going to uh, that we are going through is. Uh, uh, super key. Okay. We have learned this uh, in previous lectures as well. A super key of a relations uh, schema R, which has attributes uh, from A1 to AN, is a set of attributes S, where S is a subset of R. Okay. With properties that no two tuples T1 and T2 in any legal relation, uh, relation state simple R of R okay, will have T1 uh, S equals to T2 S. Okay. Guess you get that okay. because uh, uh, we take if we take a relation R if I simplify it if we take a relation R with attributes A1 up to A2 okay, and we take a subset of that uh, uh, subset of those attributes uh, as s okay and uh, that the values of s okay will not be equal in any two tuples that we are going to consider that is the meaning okay a key uh, uh, let's say k okay, is a super key with the additional properties of removal of any attribute from k will not cause uh, k not to be a super key anymore okay if we take a key called k okay we consider it as a super key okay uh, with the additional properties uh, the, uh, the the property that uh, super key has is if we remove some attributes from, from if we remove any attribute from that uh, super key it is no longer going to be the super key 
okay so what is the difference between the key and the super key if we take the key we say it has to be minimal okay but if we take uh, super key that is not the case okay uh, minimal in the sense that is uh, if we have uh, a uh, if we have a key uh, that where k has uh, a1 up to ak attributes okay a1 a2 a3 up to ak okay uh, of the relation r okay and if we take any uh, attribute from that key okay uh, is not a key for r okay if we take a single attribute of out of that set of attributes which we consider as key okay it is not going to be a key for the relation r we can't identify if it if we consider uh, a set of attributes as the key okay if we consider a set of attributes as key then if we take one attribute out of the out of that key and if we try to identify the tuples uniquely we are not we will not be able to identify the tuples uniquely using that se selected attribute okay so that is uh, why we say key is a minimal set of attribute it's minimal okay so that uh, that is the difference between the key and the super key but when we consider uh, a key any attribute that includes uh, uh, including the key uh, we can uh, call it a super key right including this key we can uh, add any other attributes as well then we can call it uh, a super key for an example if you take the employee relation okay where the SSN is the key okay but we can take SSN as a as a single attribute or if we take uh, SSN uh, with employee name together okay that becomes a super key okay, okay that becomes a any set of attributes that uh, includes uh, uh, SSN it will become the super key for the employee relation so that is the difference between the key and the uh, it doesn't has to be minimal so that is the difference key and the super key if a relation has uh, more than one key we call that uh, uh, we call each of those uh, key a candidate key okay one of the candidate keys is arbitrary designated as the primary key okay and all the others are called uh, others uh, other keys we call them secondary keys So that uh, that is the definition of a super key, and uh, we need uh, and uh, there are some attributes called prime attributes and non-prime attributes. Okay. For uh, as a definition, if uh, an attribute of a relation schema R is called a prime attribute. Uh, if it is a member of some sort of a candidate key okay if it's if a certain attribute is a member of a certain uh, candidate key we call that a prime key prime attribute okay and all the at other attributes okay uh, that are not participated in uh, the prime at uh, in the prime uh, in the candidate keys we call them non prime okay if there are attributes who participate uh, which participate in uh, candidate keys then we call them uh, prime attributes if they are not we call them prime non prime okay so that is uh, non prime and the prime attributes Okay. now we have to go through the uh, normal forms first normal form second normal form and the third normal form that is what we are going to do okay 
this first normal form is now considered to be the part of a um, formal definition of a relational relation in the basic relational model as well okay historically it was defined that uh, it is this disallowed to uh, have multi-valued attributes composite attributes and their combinations now uh, uh, in the relational model in the uh, when we mapping it we remove that sort of uh, now we remove that sort of uh, multi-valued and the composite attributes at the very beginning okay uh, so that uh, this is uh, it says that the attributes must include only atomic values and the uh, values of any attribute tuples must be single value uh, from a domain of uh, domain of that attribute okay and uh, so that we say that uh, it is this love having a set of values a tuple of values uh, or a, uh, a combination of both okay uh, so that uh, uh, in uh, other words it says uh, in one nf they sell our relations within uh, relations or relations have uh, rel within relation so o relations as attributes values within tuples uh, you can see that uh, in the example given here okay in the department department is a multi valued attribute okay uh, the department uh, table it has a department name number department uh, manager assistant and the department location so having multi-valued attribute is not allowed so we have to uh, uh, decompose that uh, uh, department table okay or we, uh, in a way that uh, they have they are having a single uh, value in the attributes okay so that uh, uh, when we try to do that okay that you can see that uh, we have uh, uh, it becomes then uh, it becomes a redundancy okay in this example that uh, the relational uh, schema shows uh, in part a shows that the uh, uh, schema of the employee project relation with nested relation attribute for project uh, projects right so that uh, if we go to the uh, uh, state of this uh, relation uh, uh, it shows how we how they have entered data the project number and the hours okay uh, this is not allowed in uh, one nf so what we have to do is we have to decompose this one into two relations whereas uh, we can take uh, uh, SSN with the employee name as uh, one relation and we are going to decompose this uh, 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 this uh, projects uh, nested uh, two attributes with the SSN into a separate table so that we can uh, uh, enter details without a redundancy and without uh, nested uh, attributes so that is a uh, one nf okay then uh, in the in the second normal fo form or two nf in the second normal form it says uh, as a definition a relational schema r is in two nf or in second normal form if every non prime attribute a in uh, relation r is fully functionally dependent on the primary key of r okay so all the non-prime attributes of uh, relation r should be fully functionally dependent on the primary key of r okay so what is this fully functional dependency is uh, so this uh, we can see that this uh, second normal form is based on the concept called full functional dependency this full functional dependency is, uh, is 
if we say if there's a uh, if there's a functional dependency x determines y okay uh, we say it's full functional dependency if we remove any attribute from uh, any attribute from that x okay uh, which belongs to uh, 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 any attribute from uh, x which belongs to x and when we removing that if that dependency is no longer is going to be held okay then we say it is fully functional dependency okay, x determine y is a full functional dependency okay again if i say that a fully functional a functional dependency x determine y is a full functional dependency if we if uh, the removal of any attribute a from x means that the dependency is no, not going uh, not hold anymore okay that is for any attribute a that belongs to x okay uh, that's not functionally determined y okay they are going to determine together uh, they're going to do the de uh, uh, they're going to determine y together a functional dependency x determine y is a partial dependency if some uh, if some uh, attribute a which belongs to x can be removed from the x okay? and if that dependency is still gonna hold there okay so we say that uh, x determine y is a partial dependency not a full de de dependency okay so that uh, we say in uh, second normal form all the non prime attributes of a uh, attributes a in uh, relation r is fully functional dependent uh, is fully functionally dependent on primary key of r okay so for an example uh, ssn and the project number okay in the uh, works on relation is a full functional dependency since uh, neither SSN is going to determine ours or uh, project number alone is going to determine ours okay so it holds that full functional dependency there okay. and uh, also if we take uh, SSN and the project number determines employee number is not a full functional dependency why because just by using the uh, uh, social uh, SSN we can determine the employee name okay the removal of any attribute removal or uh, removal of attribute from uh, uh, removal of uh, project number attribute uh, doesn't affect the functional dependency SSN determine employee name okay do you get that so it is a partial dependency but uh, the uh, the previous case uh, the first case is a full functional dependency okay so that uh, a relation schema uh, R is in a second normal form in every non prime attribute in R is uh, uh, attribute A in R is full fully functional dependent on their primary key so that is the definition that we have had okay so if it is not we can decompose uh, so that we can uh, have uh, uh, we can achieve that second normal form okay here what you can see in the example is like that okay here we have uh, employee project uh, relation where SSN project number hours okay employee name project name and the p location are the attributes okay. uh, ssn and the project name is the key right and uh, in the second normal form what we say is all the non prime attributes must uh, all the non prime attributes must uh, identify all the uh, prime attributes uh, all the uh, sorry all the prime attributes uh, only prime attributes data 
and determine all the non-prime attributes. Okay, so that uh, the key uh, should determine. Yeah, it means the key should determine all the other non-prime attributes. Here the key is SSN number, uh, SSN and the project number. So that it together should determine all the other, uh, all the other attributes. Okay, fully functional and depend on the key. But here, what happens is uh, uh, there's a functional dependency, uh, SSN uh, project number and the hours. Okay, and there's another functional dependency, SSN determines the employee name. And the third functional dependency we have is the project number determines the name of the project and the location. Okay, so we can remove those uh, 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 them and decompose into uh, separate relations as uh, employee project one, two, and three. Whereas uh, in the project in first one, SSN project number and hours is the hours are there as attributes, and the uh, with the in the second. Uh, uh, relation we have SSN and the employee name and the third one project number project name and the location okay so that is what we are going to uh, do in the decomposing and achieve the uh, second normal form now we are going through the uh, uh, third normal form in the third normal form what we have here is uh, the, uh, in the definition, it says according to the code's original definition, a relation schema R is in 3NF if it satisfies second normal form. So, before you come into the second or uh, third normal form, you have to make sure that your relation schema is now in second normal form. Then only you can go for the 3NF. Okay, and uh, if it satisfies 2NF and no prime attributes of R. Is transitively de dependent on the primary key. Okay, so why, wh what is this transitive dependency? So when we go through this definition, what we have to uh, know is uh, another definition that is uh, transitive dependency. Okay. So that uh, a functional dependency x determines y in a relation schema R is transitive dependency if there exists a set of attributes z. In R, okay, is neither a candidate key or nor a subset of any key of R, both uh, but still both X uh, determines Z and Z determine Y is hold. Okay, X determine Z and then Z can determine Y. Okay, so that uh, uh, we can uh, come up with an example for that. That uh, we can say that SSN. Uh, determines the manager uh, department manager SSN. Okay, how can we say that is it is transitive through the department number in the employee department uh, uh, in uh, uh, in the uh, in the example we will go through that okay in the example if we take uh, employee department uh, uh, relation that we have uh, taken in that, uh, and, uh, we have uh, uh, both the dependencies like uh, SSN determines department number. Okay, SSN determines department number, and the department number determines the manager SSN. Okay, both of them hold in the relation schema. Okay, and department number is neither a key or key nor a subset of any key of the employee department relation okay. so intuitively but uh, we can see is uh, that the dependency of manager assessment on department number is undesirable in the employee department relation so we have to keep we have to remove that department number is not a key so that uh, uh, that sort of a uh, transitive dependency is not is uh, not allowed in uh, 3NF. Okay. So in the third normal form, uh, we say that uh, a relation schema R is in third normal form if it is in 2NF and no non-prime attribute A 
in R transitively dependent on primary key R. It can be decomposed into a 3NF relation via the process of 3NF normalization. Okay, so this uh, what we are going to do is we are going to do a decomposition, right? So if we consider this uh, uh, that uh, in uh, so here we have another example for the non-transitive. Okay, mm -hmm. uh, in the assessment and the department the department manager assessment we have discussed about it it is a transitive but if we take the ssn and the employee name ssn determines employee name it is non-transitive dependency because there are no any set uh, set of attributes x okay uh, which can determine the uh, uh, where ssn is going to determine that set of attribute x and x determine employee name okay so there is no such x so we say SSN determines e employee name is a non-transitive dependency, okay? and this uh, x determines y and y determines z is with uh, uh, as the uh, where x is the primary key. We consider this is the problem that we have because it uh, y is not a candidate key or not a part of the uh, any candidate key. Okay, when uh, y is candidate. It's a candidate key there's no problem with the transitive dependency okay so in the example okay here employee project we have three functional dependencies okay so what we have done was uh, we have taken this uh, into uh, second normal form using and the deco decomposition this is the previous example that we have discussed in the uh, in the second normal form okay and uh, in the uh, when we when it comes to the third normal form right if we have a relation uh, uh, relation uh, employee department and it is in the second normal form if it is in the uh, second normal form right what you can what we have to check is whether it is in the 3nf if it is not in 3NF, what we have to do is we have to go through the normalization process in order to achieve the 3NF state. So in the employee department relation, uh, SSN is the uh, key, okay, and SSN determines employee name, right, birth date, address, and the department number. And this department number determines department name and the department manager SSN okay so in order to uh, come into the uh, third normal form what we have to do is we have to remove this uh, transitive dependency okay SSN determines department number then department number determines the department name and the department manager name and the manager SSN so we have to remove that by decomposing this relation into two separate relations so that uh, employee uh, the first relation will hold only the department number okay? and the second relation will have the key uh, department number as the key and uh, it will have two attributes department name and the manager assessor this is the uh, way that we are going to do the normalization and if you take this example, okay, here, what you can see is it uh, uh, we have uh, uh, a relation called A, okay, where it has property ID, country name, lot number, area, price, and the tax rate, okay. So the, in the functional, uh, it says the candidate key is the property ID. Okay, so in the functional dependency Y, it says it's going to determine all the uh, all the uh, uh, all the uh, other all the other attributes. Okay, and in the um, functional dependency two, it says uh, country name and the lot number together is going to determine all the other relations right 
and in the functional dependence tree it says country name okay determines the tax rate okay and functional dependency four says area determines the price okay so what you can uh, 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 what is the problem that you are uh, what are the problems is this uh, relation is in uh, uh, 1nf as long as it doesn't say uh, any uh, thing about uh, multi-valued attributes or uh, composite attributes in this uh, in the particular problem we can assume that it is in or it is already in 1nf yes it is 1nf okay now what we have to consider is whether this one is in the 2NF. Is this in 2NF? What would you say? Okay. The key or the candidate keys okay, uh, should determine all the uh, uh, all the all the non-prime attributes should be fully functionally dependent on the uh, primary key or the candidate keys. Okay. So here the primary key is property ID. And all the other attributes fully functionally depend on, depend on the on that uh, primary key. And also, what you can identify you with the functional dependency two is there is another candidate key. Can you see that the country name and the lot number together okay, act as a candidate key, and it determines all the other attributes. Okay, can you see that? Now it's a candidate key, country name and the lot number. Now the uh, functional dependency, uh, functional dependency tree says uh, country name determines the tax rate. Okay. Now it's a violation of the uh, second normal form because it there's a partial dependency. So we have to remove that one in order to get this set of relation into the uh, second normal form. Okay. Now what happens is we are going to decompose into uh, with the second normalization, uh, second normal uh, 2NF uh, process, normalization process. Okay. So we are going to remove that, uh, uh, we are going to create a separate relation for country name and the tax rate. Okay. Because a country name determines the tax rate. Okay. So we have that uh, we, we still have the country name uh, attribute in the in the relation the first relation and we take a separate relation with the country name as the can uh, primary key and it determines the tax rate okay so the first relation will have the property id country name lot number area and the price missing attribute is the tax rate because we have decomposed this relation the initial relation into two okay the second one will contain country name and the tax rate okay then here now it's in the 2nf now what we have to do we have to check whether this one is in the 3nf okay okay whether this one is in the 3nf that is what we have to uh, uh, decide okay so in order to decide that one we have we have another functional dependency which is f uh, fd4 the functional dependency 4 which where which says uh, area determines the price okay. so we can th uh, we can see that uh, property id determines the area and also country name and the lot number determines area and area determines the price okay so this is a transitive dependency as you can see okay. fd4 is a transitive dependency so we have to remove that one okay. so what we are going to do is we are going to decompose that right so that we are going to have a new relation here okay with area determines price so we are going to remove this price attribute from the uh, from this uh, first relation in the B, okay, and 
we are going to create a new relation now all together we have three relations now once we decompose it up to 3nf okay the uh, first one has property id country name and the lot number area then the second one has country name and the tax rate and the other one third one has area and the price okay so that is the decomposition of uh, that, that is how we are going to decompose for a given relation up to 3nf okay so this uh, as a summary we can say in the normal form defined informally first normal form all the attributes depend on the key okay and uh, all attributes depends on the whole key in the second normal form and in the third normal form all attributes depend on nothing but the key Okay, that is the informal definition that we can remember. Okay. In general, normal uh, form definitions, what we uh, have, uh, what we are considering is multiple keys. In all the above definitions, we have considered only one key, but uh, on on the primary key. But in general forms, we consider all the can multiple candidate keys. A relation schema R is in second normal form. Uh, in uh, if every non-prime attribute a is in R is fully functional dependent on every key of R. That is the general form, uh, general normal form definition. And uh, if we take the definition for the super key, super key of relation R is a set of attributes S of R that contains a key of R. Okay, the relational schema R is in third normal form. Or in 3NF, if whenever the uh, functional dependency x determines a holds in R, then either x is a super key of R or a is a prime attribute of R. Okay. So that, uh, but this uh, in the boys code normal form, it is allowed C conditions in the uh, in the B uh, given above that uh, a prime attribute of R. Okay. Uh, we will consider the boys called normal form uh, next. Okay. Boys called normal form or the BCNF, right? Is, uh, a real, in that we say a relational schema R is in BCNF if whenever the functional dependency X determines A holds in R, then X is a super key of R. And uh, each normal form is strictly stronger than the previous uh, one. Okay, that is two uh, NF relation uh, is in one uh, NF, three NF relation is in two NF. Okay, and every BC NF relation is in three NF. Okay, so there is exist uh, relations that are in three NF but not uh, in uh, BC NF, but uh, there are no any relation which which are in BCNF, okay, but in three uh, uh, that uh, that uh, that are not in three NF, but not in three NF, okay. So every uh, relation, uh, every uh, uh, normal form is strictly stronger than the previous uh, normal form, so that. Uh, uh, our goal is here to achieve the BCNF, okay. Initially, this BCNF was uh, proposed uh, as a simpler version of 3NF, but it was found that it is stricter than 3NF later, okay. Then uh, that is every relation in 3NF is also in 3N, uh, BCNF are also in 3NF. However, the relations uh, in 3NF is it is not a must to be in BCNF. Okay, uh, we pointed out that the uh, last uh, in the in the last section that although the 3NF allows functional dependencies that can uh, confirms to the close B, right? Uh, in 3NF definition, BCNF disallows them. I just told, uh, talk, talked about it. Okay. Intuitively, we can see that 
the need for stronger normal form than the three and if is going back to uh, when we go back to the last discussed example with the functional dependencies f uh, fd1 uh, through uh, fd4 we have uh, we have had uh, uh, four dependent uh, we have had uh, uh, four dependencies right there okay. now uh, we come up with another uh, functional dependency that is uh, fd5 okay where area determines the country name okay In the definition of BC and F, it says a relation schema R is in BC and F if whenever non trivial functional dependency X determines A holds in R, then X is a super key of R. Okay, so if, we, if, if there's any non trivial, um, uh, non trivial uh, functional dependency, what we have to do is we have to remove it because it. Is, uh, their, their x becomes a super key of r. So in this example, if you take the area is uh, determined in the country is not allowed in BCNF. So what we have to do is we have to remove that non-trivial uh, dependency okay, uh, into a new relation and we are going to decompose this uh, into a new relation with area determines country as a new relation so there area becomes a primary key and the uh, it has the attributes as country name okay so the two tables will be uh, the property I, property id area and the lot and then the area and the country name and also you can uh, see that uh, sort of uh, 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 an example in the part b as well there a and B together becomes the uh, primary key of the relation because A B together determines the C. We can conclude that A and B are the primary key. Okay. So the uh, there uh, we have uh, another functional dependency F D two C determines B, which is not allowed here. So we have to remove that functional dependency as uh, we're going to. Uh, create a new relation uh, removing C and having an attribute as uh, uh, B right but in that case that uh, it becomes very uh, uh, useless in uh, sometimes it becomes very uh, uh, problematic when uh, we decompose when, when we do such sort of decomposes so that uh, we'll say uh, stopping at uh, uh, third normal form is enough for certain relations okay so it is not a must that we need to do all the uh, decompositions if it is not mentioned uh, so we uh, for part uh, for part B we can of course uh, stop at the uh, relation uh, uh, at the third normal form the decomposition but uh, this is not in BCNF. Okay, in this example also the, uh, we have a relation called TH. Okay. student course and the instructor are the attributes and uh, where the uh, uh, there's a functional dependency course determines the instructor okay uh, student and the course determines the instructor okay and uh, another functional depend dependency is instructor and determines the course okay and the student course is a candidate key for this relation and the uh, dependencies uh, are uh, uh, in the uh, so those are the dependencies that we can find okay and uh, this relation is in tree and F but not in BCN okay why student course together determines the instructor and the instructor determines the course okay 
so that uh, it is uh, we can conclude that it is not in PCNF. Okay. Uh, Uh, so that uh, if it is uh, for the relations that are not in BCNF, they can be decomposed. So the uh, in order to meet this property, okay, uh, and the uh, decompose the uh, relations. Okay, so you can go through uh, some algorithms that are available in uh, uh, chapter eleven as well for further readings. If you are uh, if you are really keen to learn uh, what are the other algorithms that are available for, for do this sort of uh, decomposition, you can go through these algorithms. Okay. In achieving uh, the uh, decomposition of the relation, we can uh, have uh, mm -hmm. uh, this sort of a decomposition, right? Student and the instructor and uh, student course. Okay. Course instructor and the course students. Okay. Instructor course and instructor students okay uh, but all of them will lose uh, the functional dependency one okay because uh, it says uh, about the uh, it, all them all of them should depend on the primary key right so we have to settle okay by sacrificing that uh, so we don't have to, the uh, we don't have to go uh, and for some relations, it is not a must to go beyond the uh, third normal form or whatever the normal form. It is not a it is not a practical thing. Okay. So, if it is not generating any spurious tuples after joining the uh, decomposed uh, relations, right? Like this, okay. And uh, if we uh, do a denormalization, okay, and join in tables together, and it is not generating any spurious tuples, okay, uh, that sort of uh, uh, denormalizations are allowed, okay. So you are not you uh, if it is not a meaningful decomposition, you you can uh, always stop in the practical cases. So that is about the uh, normalization of uh, relational databases. So uh, uh, you can do a, do a normalization for all the relations uh, that you have uh, uh, came up with the uh, for the project uh, as well.